So first off, we had just finished a one month holiday in the USA. It was a lot of fun. But like all good things, it had to come to an end and that's where our story starts. So we left on the morning of December 30th, last year already. Uh, Dave and Pam drove us to the airport in Chicago and we said bye. It was really sad. No, I mean, Chicago, this should be packed. Normally, I can imagine this would be all lines and people rushing. What are you doing? What? Is he doing a... Talking. So after we said bye, we went through security, immigration, all that normal airport stuff. He just missed the whirlwind of security for us. <laughs> Imagine with more kids. Um, and then unsurprisingly, the airport was pretty empty, at least the international terminal. And from there, we boarded our 14 and a half hour flight back to Seoul. The flight was eventful. Eventful? Well, it was uneventful in the sense that Will did a really good job. Yeah. And it went by quicker than I thought it was, I think because we, were we knew what to expect this time. But I did have to change one poopy diaper where I got poop on my hand. <laughs> then I had to change a pee diaper which was fine, but he's just so squirmy now. You didn't get pee on your hand? He did not pee on my hand. I probably did get pee on my hand. <laughs> and then I had to change another poopy diaper where I didn't get poop on my hand, but the poop squeezed out of his diaper onto his onesie, onto his pants. And actually at one point, I didn't know they were on his pants and I was about to put his pants back on, but I saw the poop inside. So I balled it up and he didn't have any clothes. So what I ended up doing was taking my shirt off and then, I mean, it probably would have been fine to take him out on the plane without Maybe. clothes on, but I felt, I felt self-conscious for him. <laughs> <laughs> and so I rolled up the sleeves on my, my button up and put the shirt on him. It took a couple times. He did not want to, oh, he was so squirmy. <laughs> you want to put your shirt on. It was so big. It was like, he kept, yeah. was able to take his arms out. Anyways, put that on him, brought him back. That's actually fell on the plane as well and heard it got a black eye. Which got worse since we got to Korea. <laughs> yeah. But again, the plane was super empty. So really so nice to fly right now. And we got two whole rows to ourselves. So that was amazing. Yeah, that was super nice. The flight attendants actually made us move when we first boarded the flight. And it was great because we got to set up a little sleeping tent for Will. So he took a nap under the sleeping tent and then he also took his sleep sleep under the sleeping tent. Um, and I think both of us got to sleep by the time he went down for his like nighttime sleep. Yeah, it worked really well. Yeah. I feel like this time around, like Will watched more movies and also played more than on our way there. Like he played with the airplane window, opening it up down and then eating snacks off like the table tray. So that was kind of fun. Corn also got to eat her first uh, pibimbap in one month. Soft power pibimbap. How did I survive? Nobody knows. <laughs> but anyways, finally we landed. We got off the plane and we started the COVID paperwork of Korea. Basically, they handed us a bunch of forms on the plane we had to fill out. A where have you been kind of form, and then like a symptom kind of form. I don't remember exactly what they were, but we had to fill out a bunch of those forms. And then once we landed, they took us to, or we arrived at the first line, which was downloading the, the quarantine tracking app, where we had to download the app. Did you sign up for it already? Yeah, I did, but then I think they have to enter uh, in different policies, like ID number at the end, so I just did and then dropped it. But you did your country and stuff? I just did country and then did select off. They put our information, all the same information that was on the forms, 
Um, and once that was okayed by the person or the people that were like guarding the next like passageway, we went through and then had to submit the forms that we filled out on the plane. <laughs> Where the coronavirus officers or whatever. Um, just double checked all the information on the forms and then made sure that our phone numbers were actually valid and working. And then we went to immigration where we had to fill out some more forms basically with just contact information on it. And at immigration, that's where they finally asked me for my medical paper where I had to get a checkup before we left just saying I didn't have a cough or I didn't have a fever or any of that stuff. And uh, she actually had to call because it was supposed to be within 48 hours that I got it done. But we skipped a day when we came here. So it was technically three days, but she let me through. <laughs> well, because I think like actually it was less than 48 hours. So. Yeah, we did it. So well, how long do you think that took? Like 47 minutes? <laughs> I mean, not as long as immigration normally takes in airports. We made it. We're in Korea. But then we got through, and again, the airport was super empty. But we got our bags. So what do we have to do now? Uh, I don't know. I guess we have to take a special taxi home. And then we walked through the gate to actually get into Korea. And then there was like a taxi section where they like organized people into which part of Korea they were going to. So we got put in the Seoul line and then they got us COVID-19 free taxis. The only thing that felt a little different was he actually had a piece of plastic kind of separating us from him, but otherwise it just seemed like a normal taxi to be honest. I mean, we also had to keep our masks on the whole time, Yeah. but that's also pretty normal here still. Yeah. When we got the taxi at the airport, they had told us that it was like that he could take us to the public health center to get our COVID test um, before we got home. But I feel like an hour into the taxi ride, Will was Will had fallen asleep. Traffic was super bad because it was New Year's Eve, um, and so we decided just to come straight home. Yeah. I mean, they also give you three days after arriving to get the COVID test, so we just waited until the next morning. Eventually, we got home and. We got all our bags out, we brought them all upstairs, and we just crashed. It was the first time taking our mask off in like 20 hours. I haven't taken this mask off in like 20 hours. Gross. It's coming off. I feel like I almost forgot I have a mustache. Did you pay the guy? Yeah, it was on three. Did you keep your mask on while you changed Will's diapers on the plane? I did, actually. <laughs> I like, I always forget like yeah. to take it off and I'm always in there I'm like, it's oh, more I take... annoying to like take it off and then put it back on. But yeah, the next morning. In January 1st, the person that had called me when we arrived at the airport told me that we had to call before going for our COVID test if we didn't go like last night. So I called whatever phone number, the official phone number that was listed on the app and they're like, uh, just come. <laughs> and so we went. 